Abusi ya mema mwa kwa bada mwa se. Se mwa chenye gana mwa mpe nini. Nefutu fuwa wa so. Wano mwa sa mwa so efune mu. Eso ay wa my gana jubili hao sa. Wane wa mu edi mkwa mwa tu wa mfuwa. Ye mkwa homra. Ye mkwa ti mse mwa edi. Whichever route you have taken to get here. In your former public capacity with the support of parliament or ex officio or by election as regional representatives, you are now all members of this august noble institution whose task is to serve as counsel to the president. You've come from different backgrounds, academic, business, judicial, political, professional, religious, security, traditional, and otherwise, and have a wide range of competences and expertise. Moreover, many of you served in the past council, which was so ably chaired by Nana Utu Sribo II, Hine, from 2017 to 2021. To the new members of the council, I wish you a warm welcome to its deliberations. I'm confident that you will bring your considerable wealth of experience to bear and make valuable contributions to its work. It is worth recalling that as a result of the creation of six new regions during my first term of office, the membership of the council has increased from 25 to 31 with six new elected regional representatives. The possibility exists that this number may be further expanded were there to be an amendment of the Constitution which would allow the President to appoint 17 as against 11 members of the Council in order to maintain in the new regional governance structure the equilibrium of the Council as originally provided by the authors of the Constitution. This development will be the subject of deliberations between the Executive and the Legislature. Nonetheless, after 28 years of the Fourth Republic, I think it is fair to say that one of the most successful councils of state we have had has been the one that worked with me in my first term of office. We saw an intellectually vibrant council, an active one that took its responsibilities seriously. We saw a council that kept its members well informed and kept government officials on their toes. So I'm hopeful that all of you on the new council will live up to expectation and perform effectively this all-important function. Newly sworn in members, the Council plays an important advisory role in the appointment of high officials of state, such as the Chief Justice and Justices of the Supreme Court, the Chief of Staff in the Office of the President and other officials of the Presidency, the Governor of the Bank of Ghana, the Chief of Defense Staff of the Armed Forces and the Service Chiefs, the Inspector General of Police, the Director General of the Prison Service, the Chairperson and Deputy Chairpersons of the Electoral Commission, Ambassadors and High Commissioners, the Government Statistician, the Auditor General, the Chairperson and Deputy Chairpersons of the National Commission for Civic Education, the Commissioner and Deputy Commissioners of the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice, the District Assembly's Common Fund Administrator, and other critical officers of the state, as set out in Article 70 of the Constitution. Further, the Council has a broad scope of advisory functions in counseling the President, including in the sensitive exercise 
of creating new regions. According to Article 90 of the Constitution, the President can request the Council to consider amendments to bills either before they are passed or even after they are passed by Parliament. Article 91, Clause 3 gives the Council what appears to be an unfettered remit to advise other bodies like Parliament or any other public authority. In my view, this is not meant to be a busybody's charter, but on matters of significant national importance, the Council can let its views known. Between the Council and the Presidency, we have a lot of work to do to get all the appointments in place to get the government machinery to work. I hope that we shall not insist on standing on ceremony, but get to work rapidly and efficiently to enable government function satisfactorily. Members of the Council, you have been sworn into office at a difficult time in the history of our nation, and indeed of the world. We are confronted with the ravages of COVID-19, which have affected the livelihoods and lives of all Ghanaians. Through proactive measures put in by, place by government, we have seen a rebound in economic activities. However, these gains are now being threatened by the rising number of active cases in the so-called second wave that is sweeping the world. Winning the fight against the pandemic remains a collective duty and responsibility. So I appeal to you to help in this endeavor. We still have challenges of the phenomenon of illegal mining popularly referred to as galamse, corruption in public life, and we need to enhance the efficiency of the state's administrative machinery. In all these, I expect you to be proactive partners in our common efforts to find solutions that will improve the lives of our people and safeguard the integrity of our nation and its heritage. I look forward very much to working with a council that will continue to offer me honest advice based on unvarnished truth. I look forward to working with a council that will help deepen our democracy and help enhance the quality of our governance. And I look forward to working with a council that will help us deliver a prosperous Ghana. Such a council should not, however, seek to give advice to a president, the effect of which is to undermine the independence of any of the other arms of government, especially the judiciary. It is important for the success of our common enterprise that we recollect at all times the changed nature of the political environment in which we are currently operating. The decision of the Ghanaian people on 7 December 2020 to create virtual equality of representation between the two major parties of our nation in the Eighth Parliament imposes on us the principal actors of the state an obligation to seek consciously and deliberately consensus in the public undertakings to which we commit ourselves. The Council of State is well positioned to contribute to this development. I welcome a vigorous exchange of ideas between us, and it is my fervent wish and hope that this Council will help enrich the second term of my presidency for the benefit of the Ghanaian people so that together we can help realize the dreams of the founders of our nation to build under God a free, democratic, united, prosperous, and happy Ghana, the Black Star of Africa, on the principles of democratic accountability, respect for human rights, the rule of law, and the dictates of social justice. May God bless this, the Eighth Council of State, and us all. And may God bless our homeland, Ghana.
and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention. <laughs>